Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and in today's After Effects tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this. It's a uh, torn corrugated cardboard effect and it uses uh, only the standard tool set you'll find in After Effects CS3, CS4 or CS5. And as usual I'll be putting the project file for this up on my website at shortformvideo.com so if you want to use it for yourself by all means go there and download it for free. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition and we'll call it Torn Cardboard. I'm using the 720p preset here but obviously you can uh, change this to suit your own needs and we'll just make it 10 seconds long and hit OK. The next step is to right click in your composition panel and select New Solid and find yourself a nice light cardboard color brown like this one which is uh, 127 127 99 and just hit OK and we'll call this cardboard background color next thing I'm going to do is select that layer and hit Ctrl and D to duplicate it and then hit Ctrl Shift and Y to bring up the solid settings and we'll just uh, select a slightly lighter version of the same color which is 135, 135, 106 just hit OK and you need to make sure that the uh, affect all layers that use this solid option is unchecked otherwise you'll end up um, affecting both of these layers and we actually want to create a new layer and we'll just rename this corrugated layer and select new once you've done that Go to your effects and presets panel and find the Venetian blinds transition and drag that onto your corrugated layer. In the effect controls panel, set the transition completion to about 25%. And what this will do is it'll split the solid layer at the top into various vertical sections. Now you can actually adjust the uh, angle of these blinds to suit, but we'll leave it at zero degrees for now. I'm also going to increase the width to about 35. Now we can change these at uh, any time afterwards, so I'll uh, leave that as it is for now. Once you've done that, go back to your composition panel, right click on your corrugated layer, and go to layer styles and pick our old favourite, bevel and emboss. Now the default settings are a little bit too sharp for our requirements, so twirl down the bevel and emboss settings and increase the size to about 12 and maybe just soften it off by about 4. Now we can go back to the effect controls panel and just play around with the width and transition completion settings until we've got the effect that we're after. So I think a transition completion of about 30% is actually better and a width of 30 is probably good too. The final thing I want to do here is maybe just increase the feathering by about 8 and that just softens off the bevel and makes it look a little bit more like the corrugated cardboard that we're after. Okay so that's looking pretty good. On to the next step. Again select new and solid, create new solid and we'll call this top layer and uh, it should still be set to the previous color you had selected so I'll just uh, OK that. Now I'm also going to uh, duplicate this top layer and we'll rename it top layer base and maybe rename the top layer to top layer texture. So go back to your corrugated layer, grab the Venetian blinds with all the settings we, we created earlier and Control c to copy it and then Control v to apply that to the top layer texture. I'm going to go to the top layer base and hit Control shift and Y and we'll just trim the color until it's slightly darker and hit OK. Back in our top layer texture, I'm going to feather it even more to 15, but I'll leave the other settings as they are. 
And that's just given us that slightly rippled effect that uh, the top layer of cardboard has. Now that's looking good, but I'd like it to look a little bit more um, textured and cardboardy. So uh, go back to another old favorite, the fractal noise effect, and drag that onto your top layer texture. Select uh, dynamic from the fractal type, and maybe swap the uh, soft linear to spline. Just drop the contrast down to about 50, and the brightness maybe up to about 10. Reduce the opacity right down to 25 and maybe swap it to uh, multiply. And that'll just give us a little bit of uh, texture and interest on our top cardboard layer. Now just to tidy things up a bit, I'm going to pre-compose the top layer. So uh, select the top layer texture and the top layer base. Hit Control, Shift and C to bring up the pre-compose option. And we'll just call this top layer pre-comp. Make sure move all attributes into the new composition is selected and hit OK. Back in the composition panel, right click and select new and solid. Change the color this time to a much lighter version of our cardboard so probably about 155, 155, 129 and hit OK and we'll call this tear layer top duplicate that layer and rename the one underneath it to tear layer bottom and you just hit Control Shift and Y and we'll just turn the bottom layer into something just a tiny bit darker. And then go to the corrugated layer and again Control C to copy the Venetian blinds and paste that onto the tear layer top with Control and V. Now just as we did with the top layer, I'm going to pre-compose this. So hit Control Shift and C, call this tear layer pre-comp, move all the attributes into the new composition and hit OK. When you've done that, we're just going to rearrange them. So we've got the top layer on the top, the tear layer underneath, and the corrugated layer. In fact, we might as well uh, pre-comp the corrugated layer while we're here. So Control shift and c corrugated layer, pre-comp, and OK that. Now to finish off the tear effect, all we're going to do is create a mask. So uh, first things first, select your top layer, grab your pen tool, and just create a simple tear shape running across your solid. Then do the same thing with the tear layer pre-comp. And as you can see, we've got our three layers, but it's not looking quite realistic enough just yet. So there's a couple of things we want to do before we can call this project done. Uh, first things first, we're going to roughen up the edges, and we do that just by uh, finding the roughen edges effect. Surprise, surprise. Drag that onto your top layer. And as you can see, just adds a little bit of roughening onto the edge of the layer. Now you can increase this with uh, a higher border value, so maybe take that up to uh, 15. I'm just going to tap Control Shift and H to get rid of the mask guide so I can see the edge a little bit more clearly. Maybe take the complexity down to 1, but increase the edge sharpness to about 1.5. And finally, going to right click on it and select Layer Styles Drop Shadow. Now the default settings are too extreme, so uh, we're just going to trim it down a bit. I'm going to take the opacity right down to 10. And the distance to 2. And that will just give the suggestion that it is actually slightly on top of the layer beneath. 
Now we're going to do something very similar with the tail layer. So grab the roughened edges and drop that onto your tail layer pre-comp. Increase the border to about 30. Maybe drop the uh, scale up to about 150. And increase the complexity to 4. And that'll just give it a more ragged edge. And again, right click and select Layer Styles and drop Shadow. Now while the sh having a darker shadow here is actually what we're after, there is just something else I want to do to give it that more realistic effect. So uh, twirl down the drop shadow. And instead of multiply, select linear light. Now initially it may not be too obvious as, as to what that's done. But if you drop the opacity down, you'll notice that the shadow stays stronger in the uh, darker areas of our corrugated layer. And that'll just increase the illusion that we've got uh, a nice three-dimensional image there. So uh, drop the opacity down to about 35. You can play around with the distance, maybe increase it to about 7. And increase the size just to soften off that edge to about 10. I you think the uh, rough and edges complexity is just a little bit too high. So maybe I'm going to just drop that back down to uh, 2. And just finally, we want to get rid of these uh, rough edges and obviously the bevel effect at the bottom. So I'm just going to select all three layers, hit Control Shift and C, rename it Final Precomp. I'm going to turn the final pre-comp layer into a 3D layer. Select it and tap S to bring up the scale. And just increase the scale to about 103. And that will just nudge all those rough edges off the side of the screen. And uh, another final step, just to make it a little bit more interesting, is create a new light. The default setting should be fine. Which, uh, intensity 100, cone angle 180, cone feather 50. And just hit OK. I'll just uh, tap Control Shift and H to bring all the indicators back so I can see what I'm doing. And we'll just play around with the light position. Obviously paying attention to the fact that the fake light we've got on the corrugated layer is actually uh, highlighted on the left, so the light, sh light source should be somewhere towards the left. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you create a quick and easy torn corrugated cardboard layer in After Effects. Um, just a quick reminder, the project file for this will be on my website very, very shortly, so keep an eye open for that. In the meantime, hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.